Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs Hold on, are we recording Zoom? Yes. Okay, on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. On, <clears throat> on this, uh, on this edition, we will focus on uh, on the work of nursing and nurses, and we will focus on Florence Nightingale and Clara Barton. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, we would like to um, uh, say special thanks to our uh, sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many, many, many others. Um, um, okay, so... Um, so let's get started. Florence Nightingale was uh, born um, May 12, 1920, and died uh, August 13, 1910. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, she was born 1820 and died in 1910. Uh, she was an English social reformer and statistician and founder of modern nursing. Um, uh, Nightingale came to prominence while serving as a manager and trainer of nurses during the Crimson War, in which she organized uh, for she organized <clears throat> care for wood, for wounded soldiers at Constantinople. She gave nursing a favorable reputation and became an icon of Victorian culture, um, especially in the persona of, of the lady with the lamp, making rounds of wounded soldiers at night. Recent commentators have asserted that Nightingale's Crimson War achievements were exaggerated by the media and at the time, uh, critics agree on the importance of her work in professionalizing nursing roles for women. In 1860, she laid a foundation of, um, of professional nursing 
with the establishment of the nursing school of St. Thomas in London. It was her pioneering work uh, and in, in, um, in uh, by, okay, she, in recognition with her pioneering work in nursing, the Nightingale Pledge was taken by new nurses at the Florence, uh, at, and the Florence Nightingale Medal, the highest international distinction a nurse can achieve, and named in her honor at the annual International Nurses' Day, is celebrated on her birthday. Her social reforms included improving health care in all sections of British society, advocating for better hunger relief in India, and abolished prostitution laws that were harsh for women and expanding an acceptable form of female participation in the workforce. Nightingale was a uh, pioneer in statistics. She represented her analysis in graphical forms to ease drawing conclusions and actionable from data. Uh, she developed a form of the pie chart, which is known as the polar area diagram, also known or also co uh, called the Nightingale Rose Diagram, equivalent to modern circular histogram. This diagram is still um, regularly used in, in um, data visualization. Nightingale was a, was a prestigious, versatile writer in the life in her lifetime. Much as her published work um, was concerned with spreading medical knowledge. Anything you want to say regarding that? She what? Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Nightingale was born in May 1820 to a wealthy, well-connected British family at the at the at the Villa um, Cambia uh, in Florence, Tuscany, Italy and was named after the, uh, the city after her birth. F um, Florence owes their sister, Frances Pen uh, 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 Parknaby, was uh, simply named after the place of her birth. Parknaby, a Greek settlement, is now part of the city of Naples. Um, the family moved back to England in 1821, Night, uh, Nightingale uh, being brought up at the family's home in Embley, Hampshire, and Leah Hurst, uh, at Derbyshire. Uh, Florence's, uh, Florence inher inherited a liberal humanitarian outlook from both sides of her family. Her father, William Edward Nightingale, and Fanny Nightingale, uh, William's mother, uh, Mary Evans, was a niece of Peter Nightingale under the terms who uh, William inherited his estate at Lee Hurst and assumed the name and arms of Nightingale. So let's... Um, okay. Let's go down to, um, according to some secondary sources, Nightingale had a frosty relationship with fellow nurses and hotel and hospital officers. Um, back, back then, uh, basically, um, Florence was overseeing the way hospitals were uh, treating patients because of um, certain ways that um, people were being treated uh, because... Um, you know, 
uh, equipment wasn't cleaned and, and you know, uh, there was too much drunkenness and as well as sickness. Um, now, let's go down here. Um, Nightingale had 45,000 pounds at her disposal from the Nightingale Fund. Set it up, she set up the nursing training uh, in 1860. Um, and, and going back here, going back, going back here, um, Nightingale's lasting contribution was her role, <clears throat> her role founded by nurse, the nursing profession, compassion, commitment, and patient care and diligence throughout the hospital administration program. Um, <clears throat> In 1912, the International Committee of the Red Cross instituted the Florence Nightingale Medal, and she and was a, and it was awarded two years later to nurses of the uh, and nursing aides for outstanding service. Um, and it was used to also help uh, uh, nursing aides for exceptional courage and devotion to wounded, sick, disabled, or civilian victims of conflict or disaster. Um, now, let's go to Clara Barton. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Uh, yeah, uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, Clara. She was born 1821 and died in 1912. So, so let's um, go down here really quick and. All right, let's go to Wikipedia. All right, now this all can be found in Wikipedia. Um, uh, um, Carissa, yeah, Carissa Harlow Barton. Was was born December twenty fifth, eighteen twenty one, and died April twelfth, nineteen twelve. Um. Oh wait a minute. The same day of the Titanic. Wow. Um, was an American nurse who founded the American Red Cross. She was a hospital nurse. Um, in the American Civil War, a teacher and a patent clerk. Uh, since nursing education was not very formalized, she did she did not attend nursing school. She provided a self she she provided self taught nursing care. Barton was no is no it was no was no worthy, noteworthy for doing humanitarian work and civil rights advocacy at the time, at the, at the time, I'm going to get to that. Uh, okay. Um, at the time, uh, at the time before women had a right to vote. She was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1973. Um, now, uh, uh, Carissa Harlow Barton was born December 25, 1821, in North Oxford, Massachusetts, and was, and was named after the Titler character in Samuel Richardson's uh, Samuel Richardson's novel, uh, a novel, Carissa. 
Um, her her father, Captain Captain Stephen Barton, a member of the local militia, um, under the under command from General Anthony Wayne, and a crusade against indigenous the indigenous of the Northwest. She was also a leader of the uh, of progressive thought in Oxford Village area. Barton's mother was uh, Sarah Stone Barton. When she was three, when she was three years old, she was sent to school with her brother Stephen. She excelled in reading and spelling, and um, she liked. Uh, she liked school very much. When Barton was ten years old, she was assigned. She she assigned a self task of nursing her brother uh, David back to health after he fell off a roof from a head injury. She learned to distribute and to prescribe medication to her brother, um, and how to. She learned how to place leeches on his body to help bleed, uh, to help bleed him out, bleed at the time. She continued to care for David long after doctors have given up. He had made a full recovery. Now, um, Barton became an educator in 1838. She served 12 years in schools in Canada, um, from West Georgia, and um, you know her friendship lasted into uh, uh, into rom romance as, as a writer. Uh, her terminology was uh, pristine and easy to understand. Her writings and bodies of work. Could, is, could instruct nursing staff. While um, teaching in Highestown, Barton learned about the lack of public schools in Bordertown in the neighboring city. In 1852, she was um, uh, she was given more teaching positions in Bordertown, which the first ever free school in New Jersey. She was she was successful after a year and and hired other women. Both both women were making both both her and someone else were making two hundred and fifty dollars a year. Her accomplishment compelled to raise uh to raise it to near nearly uh four thousand dollars for a school building. Um they they saw the position um, as a large institution to be unfitting for a woman, female assistant, but had worked because they had worked in harsh environments. In 1855, she moved to Washington D.C. and began to work as a clerk in the U.S. Patent Office. Yeah, try not to eat while you're talking. Um, um, in, in final years, uh, she can, she continued to live in her Glen Echo, Maryland home, and she served as the American Red Cross headquarters, uh, upon her, upon her arrival, let me, uh, upon her arrival to the house, the autobiography in 1808, titled My Story, My Childhood. On April 12, 1912, she died in her home at age 90. The cause of her, the cause of her death, um, uh, um, uh, um, people don't, people don't really know. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but, what I want to say about, um, okay, but what I want to say about um, that uh, for the nursing professor, um, while we still have some time left, is that 
Uh, my mother was a nurse for 20 years. Uh, nurses are having a real tough time now uh, during COVID um, over the last two and a half years. And we really must um, help the nursing staff, the nursing profession, the, the doctor profession. We must, you know, we must um, be good to them, um, you know, be good to all, all people in the helping profession. And especially, especially individuals that work in the field of um, disabilities, the, the direct support professionals, the, the nurses aides, and so on and so forth. We must give them proper wages. I mean, look, back, back then, uh, Florence Nightingale and Clara Barton were making $250 a month. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, nurses and doctors need to be make, making more to, um, to really help it along and to give everybody a living wage. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she started the American Red Cross here. Um, now, we now we Mm hmm Now, really quick, really quick, let's go to the American Red Cross. The American Red Cross was started on May 21st, 1881. Um, that's when they... Um, Started. So let's go really quick. Um, for those that want to find out more about the American Red Cross, you can go to www.redcross.org. That's www.redcross.org. So a brief history of the American Red Cross um, here. Um, uh, the American Red Cross is the, mo is the nation's most premier humanitarian organization. The American Red Cross is dedicated to helping people in need throughout the United States and, the, and uh, in association with other Red Cross networks. Throughout the world, they depend on many generous contributions of blood and money. Um, please, if you have a chance, please donate to organizations such as the American Red Cross, they will be glad you did. Uh, Clara Barton and a circle of acquaintances founded the American Red Cross in Washington, D.C. in 1881. Barton, um, Barton first heard of the Swiss Inspire Global Red Cross Network that was visiting Europe. Returning home, she campaigned for an American Red Cross and for ratification of general protect of of the general protecting of war injured uh, people in the United States, which the United States ratis, uh, ratified in 1882, Barton led the Red Cross for 23 years, and um, they conducted the first domestic and overseas relief. Um, aided in the United States military during the Spanish-American War and campaigned for the inclusion of peacetime, uh, peacetime relief work and a global Red Cross network and the so-called uh, amendment that initially met some resistance in Europe. The Red Cross received the first congressional charter in 1900 and a second in 1905 after Barton resigned from the organization. The most recent version of the charter was adopted in May 2007 that restates, that restates the traditional purposes of the organization is giving relief and serving as a medium of communication between the American Armed Forces and families protecting national and international disaster, relief, and migration. 
excuse me, uh, 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 mitigation. <coughs> well, um, today's show was about nurses, Clara Barton and Florence Nightingale. Uh, for more information, you can go to Wikipedia and also the American Red Cross to find out more about um, uh, uh, ab about about uh, Clara Barton. Um, uh, yeah, um, but before we end, we would like to thank our um, our sponsors. Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many, many, many others. Um, again, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health and Green Mountain Support Services, for supporting Able Then On Air. Um, this ends uh, this edition of Able Then On Air. Thank you to our nurses, thank you to our doctors, and um, thank you for all the work. You are doing, again, my, my mother was a nurse for many, many years, and we have family members that are nurses. We, uh, we thank you and salute you for your service, um, for helping uh, people in war, for helping people with disabilities, people with special needs, and just people who need your help. We thank you to, to all the nursing staff, and thank you to, the, to organizations such as the American Red Cross. This puts an end to this edition of Able Then On Air. Uh, this has been a history of nurses on this edition of Able Then On Air. See you next time. Major sponsors for Able Then On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Able Then On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Able to Run Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.